G'day YouTube, Turbo Tristan here. In today's video, I'll be showing you how to upgrade your puny little brakes into something. Why don't they fit? Did I get the wrong ones? Yes, I fucking did. So we've finally got wheels that will clear these massive brakes. So what you're gonna need is some Integra, Accord, or Odyssey front brake calipers. You'll need some brake pads. These are the DB1206 CP. So these are the ceramic brake pads. You'll also need some Max Peating Rods, 282 millimeter Mini Cooper rotors. I'll chuck a link to these in the description below. Firstly, what we'll need to do is remove the factory brakes. So these are the 200 and I think 38 mil or 42 mil. I can't remember, but they're really small. Uh, so you'll need to undo these two screws here. There's two bolts at the back, a brake line. And if you do the two bolts at the back, you don't need to take the caliper off its bracket. So we'll take all of that off, undo the brake line and swap it all over. Now these can be a bit of a pain in the butt. I usually end up having to drill them out. So we'll see how we go today. I'm gonna to need to bring out the big guns, the chicane impact driver. Let's give this a crack. Piece of piss. There we go. How good is it when you have the right tools and the right space to do all your work? Can be done on the floor in your garage though. I've done it before, as you'll see in my older videos to my own EK Civic. So we'll just take that out. So I've just moved the brake line out of the road. I put the bolt back in it to stop it leaking cause it's really nasty stuff. All right, there goes the caliper. So I'm just gonna let that dangle on the brake line for now while we swap everything over. I wanna have as minimal downtime as possible with the brake line off to eliminate air pockets and also to stop it messing up my floor. So you can hang there, we'll get rid of that. What you wanna do next is take your brand new 282 millimeter brake rotor, slap that on. You can have the uh, wiper fin, so that's what these are. They clean all the brake dust and stuff off your pad and stop them from glazing. You can face them that way, which is the way they're probably supposed to go, or you can turn them around and have them a bit more aggressively, but I don't think that actually does anything. So you'll note that they don't actually lock on and they're sort of a floating disc setup. This is perfectly normal and perfectly fine. Uh, when you do the wheel nuts up, you sort of make sure you put it in the center and tighten them up. Next, take your brake caliper bracket, slide it on behind there and refit the bolts. Fit. Did I get the wrong ones? Yes, I fucking did. <sighs> Alright, so that was a little bit of a fail. Um, I actually got the wrong calipers and I spent hours and hours and hours of cleaning them, sanding them and painting them and I didn't even check I got the right ones. I got the ones with the 15 on them, I was meant to get the ones with the 17 on them. So that doesn't even fit on there. And it also doesn't clear the 282 mil rotor. So I stuffed up. I rushed that and I thought I'd hit lottery at the wreckers and I didn't. So now I've got to put that back together. But what I'm gonna do next is pull out these. You can see up here that they're actually bending under pressure. So these are the cheap 
eBay ones, we are going to remove those and put back some really nice factory brand new ones because I don't want those breaking on us when we're at the track. Wow, so lucky I checked this. There wasn't even a split pin in there and this nut, castle nut was not even tight. These had to go. This is dangerous. Even just having them on the car is death waiting to happen. So they're coming straight off. So that bit's off. The best way to get these off is not hitting here with a hammer, although these are going in the bin so you really could. Best way is to tap with a hammer just on the side here. That'll actually let that sort of... shock itself loose. This even has some flat planes on the side. There you go. Easiest way to do it. And you saw that spring right up. The person that did these obviously tightened these up first before they put this in and then sort of pushed it up into itself. You should always do all of these nuts up uh, at the top once the car is on the ground under its own weight. That way there's no stress or strain on those rubber bushes there because they can actually twist and crack if you force them to go in. So uh, we'll lower the car down, undo those from inside the engine bay, swap out these arms, and I'll show you the differences when it's out of the car. To get at these from the top, there's one bolt just down here. I think it's around a 14 mil, and there'll be another one underneath the air box. Same on the other side. I can actually see that this one on the other side isn't even done all the way up. Can you see that down there? Very hard to see, but oh, there it is right there. So it's not even tight. So that all has to come out. Bloody hell, and the battery, far out. Fun job. So we're gonna swap out to the for best ones. You can see here they've got their seal of approval, legit. There's the part number there. Uh, and these fit pretty much every single Civic uh, in the EK range. So we're gonna use those. These guys come with the castle nut. On there they have a protector for the ball joint, which is the most crucial part here. So that's really nice. And Brand new bushes, which is gonna help with the car's wheel alignment, and they supply a split pin, which is right here, all of that in the bag. So we are gonna be cooking with gas once we put these on, because the old ones were absolutely munted. I'll show you what I mean right now. So you can see here, this is the reason why we're changing them. No washers, these could rip out at any time. The ball joint dust cover's already split, just a really cheap design overall. It's already bent itself out of shape. God knows how long that has been on there, but I reckon I could almost cut those with tin snips or probably snap them off if I hit them hard enough with a hammer. they got to go. No good to anyone, those. Having camber adjustment is one thing, but being safe is another thing altogether. This will be a street car that is also gonna be fun at the track. We don't need hectic uh, pillow ball joints and caster and camber and everything all fully adjustable all the time. Maybe the next owner of this car might do that and they can then go and invest in some high quality upper control arms. I'd recommend something like Honed. If you haven't heard of Honed, check them out. They're local here in Melbourne. These guys race their car, they develop everything themselves, test it themselves, and they've got proven results. So I couldn't recommend them enough. I've got a couple of their products on my own Civic. Absolutely awesome. Probably not what we're going for here, so I didn't buy any for this car. For the next owner of this car, the only thing that we're gonna really leave untouched will be the front and rear sway bars. Now, being that this is a base model EK, you will need to upgrade the lower control arms and fit some either EK sedan lower control arms or EK4 or EJ8 lower control arms. 
From there, you can fit your front sway bar because it doesn't have one at all, uh, which is strange to me. And then you can add on a rear sway bar. There is already the chassis brace there in place, so you can add one of those on. And that's pretty much going to be the only thing uh, that's going to need for handling because we're going to have brakes, we're going to have coilovers, we're going to have wheels and tires, everything else will be sorted except for the sway bars. So I'm going to stick these in the car now, get them put back on, get everything safe, and that will give me some peace of mind knowing that when we sell this car, that the new owner is going to be safe. And enough chit chat, let's get them in the car. As mentioned, it's always best to tighten up these types of bushings uh, when the car is on its own weight. So I've just got front wheels on, all the weight of the front of the car is over the struts. So let's um, tighten these up, shall we? There we go. Well, as I need to clean up, all of my mess today was a slight fail because the brakes that I spent hours and hours grinding, sanding, prepping and painting are the wrong calipers. I made a stupid mistake and got the wrong ones on there, so they don't work. I need to go to the wreckers and get another set. Um, I think these ones had uh, 15 on the back of them. I think I need the ones with 17 or 19. I'll just double check. Um, I've started to do some of the detailing work on the car. It's still stock standard because I do want to try and dyno this car as is. But we fitted up the new safer upper control arms. I fixed up the handbrake. I went to the wreckers and grabbed another pin, stuck that in, adjusted the cable. It's nice and tight. Just behind me are the new rims. Hope you guys like them. They've just come back from being straightened, smoothed off, and also being sandblasted. So now I'm just gonna do some little touch-ups of some of the imperfections, some of the little nicks and marks, give them a good clean up, and then I will be painting them in the custom color that I had mixed up today.
Well, the undercoat's dry, so now it's time to hit it with a bit of color. Hopefully it lays down nice and smooth. I might hit it uh, up like that first, and then I'll lay them down flat so when it's drying, it dries flat. But hope you're enjoying the time lapse. Hope you like the color. But here is the big reveal of the new rims for the car. They are 17 by 7.5 plus 42 offset. Came off a CRX Del Sol. They looked absolutely mint on there. Again, this was another slow episode. Not heaps of content happening as far as mods and everything goes. But we did make the car safer. I did learn that I stuffed up with the brakes. You did see the six set of rims and the custom uh, gunmetal grey colour that we painted them. Uh, the handbrake's fixed. The car is all sanded down, ready for paint. I did get a legal EK9 style spoiler uh, from Zero Offset. They had the best one. Uh, a viewer helped me out and said that they had one they've had in the box for a year, haven't fitted it sold it to me i saved myself 20 bucks off buying it through the website so and i got it the same day which is great it has the brake light and it's an upgrade to an led brake light so that's awesome everything bolts up the fitment is awesome so when this car comes back from paint we'll fit it all up get it all sweet i've also sanded prepped and primed the side sill plates or the side skirts the weather strips along the side of the car they're all done. I've done the grill and the grill surround. That's all ready to go. So hopefully when it goes off to paint, the guys are happy with my work and they can just get straight into painting straight over it, get it back to us nice and quick. I've got some tires, 20540. They're going on those rims tomorrow. So hope you really enjoy the content. It is starting to come together now. We've got all the pieces. I do need to sort out the brakes. I'm going to paint the rocker cover, picking up an air intake tomorrow. I was going to make one out of stainless steel, managed to find a brand name one out of alloy for pretty much what it would cost me to make one out of stainless. So that's going on the car, so that's a bargain uh, and also a time saver. I do need to make a full exhaust, but I won't start that until the car is back from paint and dynoed in stock form. Then we'll do all the mods to the car, get it nice fit the underglow, fit up the speakers, get the stereo cranking. I'll make a new custom uh, floor for the back of it and get it just pumping. This car is gonna be sick, uh, except for the power plant, which is P-plate legal and uh, just a good reliable D16. Everything else on the car is gonna be mint and done perfectly. And I just can't wait to see it finished. 
Hope you guys are liking the content. Starting this week, I'm gonna do another project. I'm gonna add a turbo to something. It's really out of the blue. I didn't even know I was doing this until about a week ago, but we've got all the parts. The car's out the front. It's something I've never worked on before in my entire life. So it's gonna be a bit of a learning curve. I'm pretty sure all of the principles will be the same. So I hope you enjoy that. Until next time, please like and subscribe. I'm trying to get to 10,000 subscribers before the end of 2021. If you could subscribe, that would help me a lot. Spool up and we'll see you later.